We all know that there are some significant trade barriers within uh, between countries in Africa. It is not always seamless for products to cross borders. This system will allow not only the private sector, but also governments to be engaged in creating digital customs clearance. And indeed, today we have national single windows. There are some countries such as Singapore, such as Malaysia, that have been very aggressive in creating a electronic customs clearance with anytime products go in and out of their country. You have regional single windows, and ASEAN is a good example of that. Singapore, Malaysia, and ASEAN are all supporters of GCEL because they see a powerful opportunity to create one platform that allows national single windows, regional single windows, all to be part of the same system. Now in Africa, this allows the equivalent of a technological leapfrog for African governments because it will provide the tool sets to create electronic customs clearance, all suited to the individual regulations of a specific country. We don't set those regulations, the country sets those but we facilitate the opportunity for products to meet all of those requirements before the product reaches the port or the border. So imagine, if you will, a truckload of products moving um, from Sudan to Ethiopia. When it reaches the border, all of the requirements of Ethiopia could have been met electronically in advance which means that truck can cross the border very quickly. Now, all of that said, we can't solve the problem of some governments who may want to keep their border crossing slow. But what we will do is shed a light on where those problems are occurring, and then it's up to others to resolve them. But in terms of economic integration, the key to creating more intra-African trade is efficiency and transparency. Our system provides both at the same time. So I believe that as you imagine African SMEs becoming more efficient, as you imagine government customs clearance becoming more efficient, you have the best possible set of conditions in which to increase trade across Africa. Now, one other point I would stress. Our system is based on shelf to shelf. That can be shelf to shelf within Ethiopia. It can be shelf to shelf from Nigeria to South Africa. All of those situations are covered. Now, one final point I want to make about the infrastructure question that you posed. African governments will face the biggest single question in coming years in deciding which infrastructure to invest where. To answer that question, they must know where is the trade going to happen. Imagine, if you will, in the Ivory Coast, where there are many cocoa producers. I'm trying to take an example that's close to your heart. There may be 10 roads that the Ivory Coast government is being asked to build, but they may only have the funding to build two of the 10. So the question is, which two? Which two do you say yes to, and which eight do you say no to? And that that's where the orders are being placed for the future. Then it becomes very easy to build those two roads and not the other eight. And that information available free of cost to the Cote d'Ivoire government is a very powerful base on which to make those decisions. 
one other point, and that is when you have this kind of information in real time about where current and future trade volume is going to be, you also attract private sector investment. And the best thing that can happen for African governments is to have the private sector come and invest in some of that infrastructure themselves and diminish the burden on national governments and on international donors. This system will do all of that. 